Greetings, my name is Ryan Nix. I'm a Principal Solutions Architect with Amazon Web Service. Joining me today is Charlotte from Red Hat. Charlotte, say hi. Hi everybody, my name is Charlotte Fong and I'm a managed OpenShift Black Belt at Red Hat. Thank you for having me here, Ryan. Absolute pleasure. Right, uh, OpenShift and more specifically the Red Hat OpenShift service on AWS or uh, Rosa. Many customers are moving their OpenShift investments to AWS. OpenShift historically has had a container registry built into the OpenShift platform. So you can take your container images and actually store them in that internal OpenShift registry. That said, many of the customers I work with have already invested in their own container storage uh, in investments. Um, many of them are using AWS services, one of them being uh, the uh, con uh, Elastic Container Registry, ECR. So what about customers that want to take advantage of AWS ECR or are already using ECR, can they store their containers in ECR and still consume them from OpenShift and what building blocks, what components are needed to facilitate this? Uh, I think it's worth noting that whether they're using the internal container registry or whether they're using something like ECR, they they behave in very similar manners. There's still a push and pull of those images it's really about how do they authenticate to the uh, the ECR platform. That's absolutely correct. So the great thing with Rosa is even though it's very opinionated, it gives you that option. It's very extensible. You can like integrate it with different. There, there, there's different, choice. Yes. Customers there's a have a lot of choices exactly. Yeah. And being a, a native AWS service, it does integrate really seamlessly with AWS ECR, which is like. Amazon's um, Elastic Container Registry fully managed for you, highly secure, highly available. So it's a great choice. So um, as she said, for you to use Rosa, like to use ECR with Rosa, um, you have same same process. It's a push, and then it's a pull. And it's important to note that. ECR has like the public and private registry, but of course we recommend that you use private for your production grade because you want it to be secure. And um, in order for you to pull or push, there needs to be like an authentication that has to happen and you can make use of AWS IAM. Okay, so there is going to be uh, a role and a related policy that dictates how can my workloads or how can OpenShift uh, interact or basically meet the permissions requirements of that, that registry. Being able to push, being able to pull, being able to list the objects in that, that registry. That's absolutely uh, right. ECR is a little different from many traditional container repositories in that uh, the it's not just a simple username and password. You, you're interacting with roles and policies, but there is also a short-lived credential. It cycles those credentials every 12 hours. So even if you've authenticated once, 12 hours later, that authentication cycles, and then you kind of need to re-go through that process. Uh, what is there inside OpenShift to firstly deal with this authentication and deal with that credential cycling. All right, so as you mentioned, because of that short leave um, token, which lasts only for time, is really a challenge for many um, users who decide to go with ECR because um, you either have to like write scripts to do that uh, in an automatic, like to automatically refresh the token. And then that, that's a script that you're sort of scheduling with something like a cron job historically. Exactly. Or, um, or you can you have to do that manually, which becomes a hassle. Nobody wants to be updating tokens manually, right? Um, so what we, uh, we, we have a, an operator, a community, it's a community operator. It's known as ECR secret operator. And 
and this operator updates that process. So it's, it's essentially an operator that takes the scripted process of re-authenticating to ECR and, and then pulls that token down and stores it as a secret internally in OpenShift. That's so every time that I am needing to interact with that registry, and this, this could be anything, this could be like OpenShift source to uh, S2I, source to image, uh, building a container, oh, pushing it to there, uh, interacting with it. Or the Walker Notes pulling images from. As, um, as you're scaling or as exactly. you're deploying workloads. Is it just as simple as going into the operator hub and deploying the operator? And, and what sort of configuration is, is needed over here? So what you need to do, as you said, you, yeah, you have to go into operator hub and, and um, deploy this operator. You also need to give this operator permissions. So you can go either route. I am, you can, give it, you can create a user for that operator and give it role, uh, policies and permissions. Or you can do like the STS, which is like the temporary token, which would be the preferred way of authenticating the operator with your ECR. And what the operator does is it just continuously talk to the get authorization API to regenerate the token and then update the secret that is needed for that authentication to happen between your ROSA cluster and your uh, repository. So there's a, there's a couple of things I see as a benefit here. Firstly, you have a container repository, and you mentioned it's it's managed. What, what we mean by that is uh, it will scale dynamically. You're not managing storage to store all of those container images. It's a managed service from a reliability standpoint as well mm -hmm. that uh, you know, AWS worries about is that service always available. Uh, you can set up replicas, you can set up uh, inter-region interactions. Uh, the real magic for me is this ECR secret operator that Red Hat has cr uh, created and, and it's really solving the problem of how do I automate the updating that 12-hour cycle secret. Uh, in the past, customers had to do this on their own. Yes. Uh, now we've got a very simple uh, operator coming into the effect here. Uh, not all customers are using ECR. Uh, there are other things on the market. I think uh, if you're looking for something from Red Hat, we're probably talking about Quay. Yeah. Um, and Quay, also very, very simple process to integrate with, with Rosa. Uh, do we see customers investing in, in a, a common pattern here, or is it a very, very diverse mix of, of container repos? Um, with most of our Rosa customers, we see most of them investing in AWS, uh, Amazon ECR. Okay. Yeah, that's, that's like the most, because they're already using AWS products, and they're kind of already familiar with like those services on AWS, and it's about them to using just spend commits on AWS. So it's that's the most okay. frequent. So, so w when I'm seeing customers migrate from on-premises OpenShift to OpenShift on the cloud, the two things I'm seeing is a shift from self-managed to managed. So Rosa being a, an adopted service. And then again, I'm seeing a, a very broad adoption of AWS native services to complement their OpenShift investment. That's right. Uh, is there anything that we have skipped over or missed? Um, so the only thing I want to highlight is this operator needs to be, um, when you create the secret, it needs to be linked to your builder, which facilitates like your service account. Correct, yes. Yeah, and then, um, which is what does the automatic build for you. So that, that could be a step in a OpenShift pipelines yes. process or in a more traditional sense, Jenkins, whatever. Again, exactly. lots of customer choice over here. Uh, Charlotte, again, thank you very much. Always a pleasure having you here. And Thank you so much for having me, Ryan. Thank you, everybody. And thank you for joining us.